facilitator and his wife, Lord, who have opened their doors, Father, using technology to feed your children and, Lord, to nourish us spiritually. Father God, we just ask that everyone who is on receive a blessing, Lord, and as the saints are edified, Father, you be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We ask you to mute your phones or do the star six thing as we uh, prepare, as we're taping for our people and our friends across this nation and overseas. And these messages go out to a lot of people. We're, we're th we thank God for the opportunity to uh, teach uh, all nations, all that are uh, willing to watch the videos and and they are being taught so we thank god for this call this um great opportunity and we thank god for each and every one of you because uh we couldn't do this without you your love is so important to us and your support and your prayers so we praise god well let's uh those of you who have your workbooks uh we ask you to open to um page 230 in your workbook and we're studying the lessons tonight, the book of Mark. Those of you who do not have your uh, workbook, consider getting a workbook. We have just finished the halfway mark in our 52-week our course. We're on lesson 28 tonight. And um, get your workbook, and then when we finish uh, this first year, then you'll be able to join right with, in with us as we go into next year. This workbook is a great resource and it only costs $35. So send for your workbook and uh, get a copy for a friend or a relative and um, help help support this ministry. And we thank God we look forward to uh, publishing this workbook in Jamaica next year and hopefully uh, Elijah in Kenya. We want to bring this workbook to Kenya. I'll bring some copies with me when I come there in July so you all can look over this workbook in Kenya and, and Uganda and Tanzania, and we believe God for a way that we can get this published for all the people uh, in Kenya. Also to our Bible students in Kenya, we look forward to the graduation. We look forward to our graduation with you. Uh, you're, you've done a great job, and your teachers, Elijah and the teachers, great work. We look forward to uh, celebrating your graduation in July and ordaining pastors. So uh, we're planning for that trip. We're praying and, and uh, believing God he put all things in place for this wonderful trip uh, to, to Africa. Uh, it's, it's about a 24-hour flight. Uh, that's why they break it up into segments. Um, so we we fly um, um, to Europe and then in, down into Africa and then from Africa back to Europe and back to the good old USA. And Jackie is traveling with me. We're looking forward to a great time in the Lord. So I say to my friends in 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 Kenya, uh, 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 Nataka Kuku, Nataka Kuku. That means I want uh, chicken. Uh, nataka kuku, and um, we say buana asafiwe, buana asafiwe, praise the Lord, and we say asante to all of you who work so hard in, 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 in training the people so they can graduate. Okay, so let's look at the gospel of Mark. Praise God. We thank God. The background and history, the gospel of Mark was written by John Mark between 65 and 70 A.D. By the way, John Mark is one of the few people in scriptures who have a first name and a last name. No, well, his name was not John Mark. A lot of people, we don't know their last names. Uh, they were named, uh, uh, but we, we don't know what their surnames was were, were. We call John Mark John Mark because in, in the Hebrew tongue, his name is John, but in the Greek, uh, his, he, he goes by Mark. So um, just like people try to give, uh, say that Jesus Christ's name, his first name is Jesus, and his last name is Christ. No, no, his name was Jesus. Uh, he didn't have a last name. Uh, he was the son of Joseph. Uh, his earthly father was the son of Joseph. Um, 
So you could call him uh, Jesus Bar Johanna, uh, 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 or uh, Jesus uh, Bar uh, Johan, um, or or something like that. But most of the people in the Bible do not have last names. We take them by their first name. John Mark is known as John Mark because in the Hebrew, among the Jews, he was known as John. And among the Greeks, he was known as Mark. The central message of this book is the suffering Son of Man, who is, in fact, the Son of God. The central message, the suffering Son of Man, who is, in fact, the Son of God. Early tradition is unanimous that the author of this gospel was John Mark, who was a close associate of Peter and Barnabas. Now, when we use the term early tradition, we're looking at what the church fathers had to say in the first, second, and third centuries AD. We're basically looking at second century and third century AD. We're looking at Eusebius, the father of church history. We're looking at Irenaeus. We're looking at uh, uh, many others who were bishops in the early church in the second and third centuries AD, even though they were scattered, some in Greece, some in Rome, some in Alexandria, um, they would meet together as a college of bishops. And, and whenever you hear the term early church tradition, you're looking at what the church fathers had to say. Some say that Mark was the nephew of Peter and Barnabas. And I support that, uh, that, um, that he was Peter's nephew and Barnabas' nephew. We see on that first missionary journey when uh, Paul asked him not to go along with them on the second missionary journey because John Mark had dropped out. He had dropped out of that first missionary journey. He was just a young kid on fire for Jesus, but he couldn't hang. He could not hang. And so he dropped out of the first missionary journey. And then after Paul and Barnabas returned, uh, Paul, Barnabas wanted to go back again, visit those churches, and Paul, and he wanted to take John Mark. And Paul said, no, 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 he, he left us. He left us hanging. We needed his help. He left us, and I don't think it's a good idea to take Mark uh, with us. And so ba Paul and Barnabas had a little argument, a little dissension, and so they decided uh, that Barnabas would go uh, on a journey, and he would take Mark with him. But Paul uh, uh, chose Silas uh, for his companion for the second missionary journey. Ladies and gentlemen, we can get a great point, a teaching point here. Even though they did not agree, ladies and gentlemen, they did not fight, they, they didn't shoot one another, they didn't kill one another, and they didn't badmouth one another, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they didn't badmouth one another. Uh, the deacons did not put the bad mouth on Mark. The deacons did not put the bad mouth on, on Paul. Um, but they separated and said, okay, we are chosen by God. We love Jesus. The Holy Spirit lives in us. And though we're not getting along for the sake of the kingdom of God, ladies and gentlemen, they looked at the big picture. For the sake of the kingdom of God, we will go two different ways. And so Mark went with Barnabas, his, 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 his uncle Barnab Barnabas, Uncle Barney, and they went and visited Cyprus and established churches in Cyprus while Paul and Silas uh, went back to the churches in Galatia. So they teach us a beautiful lesson. We can find beautiful lessons on how Christians resolved conflicts. They did not get on Facebook and talk about one another's mama. They didn't talk about one another's church. They didn't do what we see on Facebook today. No, because they love the Lord. And, for, and, and plus, they were saved. They were saved. A lot of folks getting on Facebook ain't saved, ain't acting like they're saved, and saying anything and doing anything. But that's a whole nother story. So uh, let us move on. Mark's mother must have been quite an influential leader in the Jerusalem church. We say this because it was at her home, Mark's mother's home, that Peter went when the angel released him from prison. When the angel released uh, Peter from prison, 
in Acts 12, 12, Acts 12, 12, Peter went to the home of Mark's mother where the church was meeting for him, not only meeting together, but they were praying for him for his release. And while they were praying for his release, in walked Peter. It blew their minds. Mark was a companion of Paul and Barnabas on the first missionary journey. We mentioned that uh, the church fathers, the early church historians, as we mentioned above, uh, uh, stated that the Gospel of Mark was written after the death of Peter. They believe that this Gospel was written after the death of Peter, but before the fall of Rome. So we, we have like a, a three uh, three or four year window. Peter was killed around about 66, 67 AD. Rome fell in 70 AD. So it's believed that the Gospel of Mark was written during that window. Uh, the earliest reliable witness to the Markan authorship, the earliest reliable witness that we have that Mark wrote the Gospel of Mark appears to be from a man named Papias, P-A-P-I-A-S, Papias, who was the bishop of the church at um, Hierapolis around 135 to 140 A.D. You say, well, where was Hierapolis? Don't ask me. As they say, don't stop me to lie, Dr. Gene Bratton. As I say, don't stop me to lie. I don't know where Hierapolis was, but it was somewhere in Greece. Uh, somewhere in Greece. It's a Greek word. It was a city in Greece. But there was a man, a one of the church fathers. He was Papias, and Papias from Greece uh, believed that Mark uh, was one of the first to believe that Mark, to substantiate that Mark was the author of the, the gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, we spent a little bit of time trying to establish who was the author of these books because as we go through Genesis through Revelation and are through the Bible in one year, we want to talk about the book, the contents, what the word says, what the logos says. Uh, we want to know about the writer, the writer's background, and to establish the authenticity of the book. Why? Because as we learned uh, a few weeks ago, there is a group of books called the Pseudepigrapha, and there's a group of books called the Apocrypha, and these are the false books. And there are a lot of people going around uh, thinking they're deep because they have access to the Pseudepigrapha and the Apocrypha. But there's nothing deep about the Pseudepigrapha and the Apocrypha. They are given those words because pseudepigrapha means false writings. In other words, they could not prove who the writers of those books were. And, and the church fathers, the bishops of the church, in the Council of uh, Nicaea, 325 AD, in the Council of Nicaea, 325 AD, the bishops came to the agreement and they believed that the Holy Spirit led them to, to uh, select the books of uh, the writings that are now in the New Testament. And by 325 AD, they combined the writings of the New Testament, uh, those 27 books, with the 39 books that had already been canonized or selected by the Jewish rabbis uh, around four let's say 450 BC and so we got our Bible ladies and gentlemen from the the work of the Jewish rabbis in 450 BC as they met as a college of rabbis and they established the Old Testament books and then in 325 AD we uh, see that the the um, church fathers the bishops of the church met and they looked over all of the writings they they had hundreds of letters, hundreds of writings, ladies and gentlemen, that people thought were divinely inspired. And here's what they did, ladies and gentlemen. They laid those books out, and they prayed unto God, and they trust the Holy Spirit, and asked the Holy Spirit to, to produce the canon. In other words, show us what books are divinely inspired. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how we receive our Bible. The Bible is not just 66 books that were written by people and somebody just chose 66 and put them together and slapped them together and started selling books on eBay or, or, or Amazon.com. No, it didn't work that way. God the Father, 
God the Holy Spirit moved on the hearts of the people. And they studied these books. They studied 1st and 2nd Esdras. They studied 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Maccabees. Uh, Maccabees. They studied Judith and Tobit, and they studied all these other books, uh, the Gospel of Timothy. They studied all these other books, and, and they came and they sought the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, they sought the Lord. They tested these writings uh, with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit gave them the canon, the C-A-N-O-N, which means the divinely inspired books of the Bible. Thank you, Dr. Gene Bratton. And, um, it's an amazing story. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an amazing story. One day when you have some extra time, Google how we got the Bible and look at that story. Look at, you'll see all the many men who were put to death even, even for trying to translate the Bible from the original manuscripts into the vernacular languages. Ladies and gentlemen, hundreds, even thousands of people were put to death because Satan did not want these books translated so that other people can read them and understand them. It is a fascinating story, and we thank God for John Mark. We thank God for Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We thank God for Paul, the apostle, who wrote 14 books in the New Testament. We thank God for Peter and James and Jude and all the other writers, and then we thank God for uh, all the writers of the Old Testament, Moses, who wrote the first five books, Joshua. We thank God for Ezra. We thank God for Nehemiah. And we could go on and on and come on up the line as, as God chose um, 40 different men over a period of 1,600 years, ladies and gentlemen. God chose 40 different men. Sorry, ladies, but he chose men, 40 different men who wrote over a 1,600-year period what God gave them the, to write. That is why when Paul writes in 2 Timothy, he says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness that the man or woman of God may be, may be, may be thoroughly furnished, uh, thoroughly, thoroughly equipped. And so the Bible uh, lets us know that uh, these writings came through a lot of scrutiny, a lot of testing, but uh, God chose these men and they wrote what God gave them to write. And over the years, these were the word of God, the Bible is the word of God, a.k.a. the word of God, or the logos, uh, the written word of God. And it's been tried and proved, and, and the devil cannot uh, counter the Bible. He cannot uh, 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 disqualify it. He cannot stomp it out. He cannot burn it up. He cannot get rid of it. Uh, uh, when God produced the Bible, he produced a way that we can put a hurting on the devil. You want to put a hurting on the devil? Start reading your Bible. Start quoting scripture. Start adding a, a P.S. on your letters to people. Uh, put a postscript on your email address, uh, uh, on your email letters, and, and, and put a scripture. You want to put a hurting on the devil? You help spread this word throughout the whole world. Amen. If you want to put a hurting on the devil, get you a Twitter account and do a tweet. Put a scripture on Twitter every morning and just watch how this thing just takes off all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we just praise God. And that's I, I just did a whole commercial for, for Mark uh, just to substantiate. He was chosen by the Holy Spirit. And uh, Papias... Uh, uh, attested that he was the writer and so that many other writers and so this Bible that we have ladies and gentlemen cherish it do not worship the Bible I say again do not worship the Bible do it's a book it's the Word of God it's the Word of God it's a it's a guide it's a lamp unto our feet a light unto our path but the Bible is not God the Bible is not God. We know the scripture says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But we do not worship the Bible. We worship Jesus Christ 
as the Word of God. But I just want to caution you, uh, uh, do not make the Bible an idol. Ladies and gentlemen, I've seen people, uh, uh, I don't know if they do that up in Massachusetts, Lindor is great, but I see people with their Bibles on the dashboard of their car or in the back window or you go into their houses, they've got an open Bible on the coffee table or in their study, an open Bible, got a lot of dust on it, but, but they have an open Bible there. And, and, and you better not touch it. Don't you put your hands on my Bible. Don't you touch it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is not an icon. It is not an idol. The Bible is the word of God. We are to study it. We are to study it and show ourselves approved unto God. It's a road map. God has designed a road map to take us from the cradle into eternal life. Praise God. So it could, um, we look at Eusebius. Eusebius, E-U-S-E-B-I-U-S. -E -E Eusebius is called the father of modern church, the father of church history the father of church history. Eusebius lived in uh, the 4th century AD, and he quotes Mark as being the interpreter of Peter, the interpreter of Peter. Although the early church fathers were careful to attribute direct apostolic authorship for the Gospels, the church fathers gave this Gospel to Mark, even though Mark was not an apostle. Mark was not an apostle, and the, the early church fathers uh, 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 lined up the apostles with the writings that they had written, but they did not call Mark an apostle. I kind of want to differ with the church, early church fathers. They call, say that Mark was not an apostle, but an apostle is, is one sent out by the Lord, one sent out on a special mission by the Lord to yeah. establish churches. And Mark's history, he went with his uncle uh, uh, um, Barnabas on his, his second journey. He went with Paul, helped Paul to establish churches. So Mark does qualify as an apostle. He went with his yeah. uncle Barney uh, on the second missionary journey. And then Mark is in Rome. Mark is in Rome at the time Paul is put to death. Paul wrote in um, in, in in that uh, in in Second Timothy. He says, "and and bring Mark with you." He said, "He bring my coat is cold in this dungeon, and bring Mark. He is profitable to me for the ministry." So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to caution you, and I'm saying all this because so many people are hung, are hung up on titles. Well, what what what's your title, uh, uh, Leroy Carter, Leroy? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, what's your name, Leroy Carter? And 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 some people get angry in some ecclesiastical circles. They want me to write the right Reverend Doctor uh, Leroy Carter. I don't later for that. You give that to somebody else. Amen. My mama named me Leroy, and Leroy is French for the king. And 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 uh, Leroy, okay, or Leroy, as a certain persuasion, they like to pronounce it Leroy. But my name is Leroy, okay. That's my name. That's good enough for me. It, it was good enough for my birth certificate. It's good enough for me. But you know, in some, uh, I've I've been in many churches, and they would say, "What's your title, Mister?" Uh, uh, they get angry when I when I when I say that. Or oh, are, are you an apostle? Yes, I'm an apostle. God has called me to be an apostle. Are you are you a bishop? Yes, I'm God called me to be a bishop. I carry the title of bishop, apostle. Uh uh uh, uh are you a doctor? Uh well, uh, I have an uh I have a uh an honorary doctorate degree and I'm working on my doctor of, of ministry degree right now. But see, these titles don't mean a thing. These titles, ladies and gentlemen, what good is it having a and a tight a title a bishop or an apostle or all this if you can't lay hands on the sick and they recover amen what good is it having all this title and 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 and, and a demon comes in the church and and disrupts the church and all the people run out because they're scared and 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 the demon shuts down the ministry a, a title doesn't mean anything you know uh, uh you don't need a title to stand up and and, and shut that sucker down you, you you cast that demon out by the authority of the name 
and blood of Jesus Christ. So titles don't mean a thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. We're living in a society where everybody everybody has to have a title. And, and if you don't call certain ministers by their title, they are they no longer befriend you on Facebook. They they cut you off. They because because you don't address them by their title. You take your title and never mind, I ain't going there. I ain't a devil, you still <laughs> almost made me tell him you almost made me tell him take that title and shelve it, but I ain't gonna do that. I don't need a title. I've been born again, washed in the blood, and you've been born again and washed in the blood of the Lamb. And so, so don't get hung up on, on being pumped up, being stroked by people, because we're born again. There's no big I's and no little U's. Uh, everybody's equal in the body of Christ, but God has called people to offices. God has given promotion, and we could go on and on about promotion, but I'm supposed to teach Bible study tonight, but there are some people, uh, they were not called, they were sent. There are some people who have their positions because they have inherited from their mama or their daddy. Their mama founded the church. Their daddy was uh, the pastor. Daddy died, so they were looking for somebody to pass the ministry on, on to, and, and somebody they wanted to control, somebody who could, who could you know, keep the finances, keep the building from going under. So they, they chose so, certain people. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to get into all this, but I do know that John Mark was saved. I don't know who led him to the Lord. It could have been Peter or it could have been Barnabas, but he was saved. And even though he quit the first missionary journey, he came back, ladies and gentlemen. I love Mark because Mark, not only did he quit, but he came back. And a lot of us have quit. I'm a witness. I've quit a lot of times and, and, and came back. I know some churches. I said, I ain't ever going back to that place again. Man, that's the throne of the devil, man. Uh, there, there have been places where you said you weren't going back again. But when, when the Lord says go back, you go back. And you go back, but you go back differently. The next time you go back, you go back under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You go back trusting the Holy Spirit. I wonder, can I get a witness out there? The church fathers stated that Mark's gospel was written around the death of Peter around about that time um, and after the persecutions of Nero. Nero was crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, Nero was crazy. He was whacked. Nero uh, blamed all the Christians. He blamed the Christ Christian community for setting Rome on fire. Ladies and gentlemen, history says that Nero started that fire himself. Nero went out and started a fire in Rome and then he went back and called a council, called all his counselors together and advisors and said, see, see that fire out there? The Christians set the city on fire. History shows us that Nero set the city of Rome on fire to blame it on the Christians. And the people blamed the Christians. And there was so much persecution of Christians. They were uh, rounding Christians up, feeding them to the lions, slaughtering them. Uh, it became so, so, so uh, messed up for Christians. Ladies and gentlemen, do not think that a time like that cannot return. I say do not think that those st st uh, sadistic times cannot return. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in an age where uh, almost anything can happen. But we want to encourage you. We want to encourage you in the name of Jesus. Stay prayed up. Stay strong in the Lord. Don't quit on Jesus. Don't turn back. The Bible says any man having put his hand to the plow and turning back is not fit for the kingdom. Uh, we're going to see some difficult days, ladies and gentlemen. The body of Christ is going to go through some great persecution. You and I are going to see some difficult days. But ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says greater is he in us than he that's in the world. I want to encourage all my friends in other lands. Many of you are going through persecution. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I want to encourage people in America, don't get laid back, don't get soft, 
don't get uh, 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 above yourself. Uh, you better dig into the Word of God. Learn this Word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is coming when uh, there might not be any preachers in this nation. There might not be any Bibles. The first thing an enemy would do would be to round up all the preachers and round up uh, all, all the the books and get rid of the books. They did that uh, during World War I in Germany and in parts of France and Europe. They did that during World War II. Ladies and gentlemen, they did that uh, in 1917 in Russia. Uh, 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 still, they don't have uh, uh, many Bibles in Russia. They did that in China, 1949, ladies and gentlemen. And it's a, you can be put to death by carrying a Bible in China. So ladies and gentlemen, we need to study this word. I thank God for through the Bible in one year where we can study the word. We can get taught. God has given us anointed teachers. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. He's guiding us and we emphasize learning the word of God. Study the word of God. Jesus said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you, do not wait until trouble comes and then try to find your Bible and blow the dust off your Bible. Get ready now. Amen. Get ready now. Put this Bible in your spirit now. Put this word of God in your spirit now. Uh, I, I encourage people to get a three by five card. Get you a pack of them, packs of them. Write a scripture on three by five cards memorize that scripture and once you have it memorized it's in there and nobody, nobody can burn that word out of you because the time is coming ladies and gentlemen where the true christians need to stand up and 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 man up and woman up because uh if you if you're perpetrating if you're not serious uh, you won't have a leg to stand on. I'm going to uh, ask Dr. Jean Bratton to unmute her phone and just comment on that. Amen. I was just getting ready to write in the, um, in the chat box, stand up and man up. We have to stand up as Christians and man up as Christians. Um, this is not the time to shrink back. It's not the time to cower in your faith. It's time to stand up and man up. And just like Pastor Carter said, there's a day coming when uh, there, there won't be pastors. Remember, between the Testaments, there was a 400-year period where there were no prophets to speak to the people. So it's time to take a stand. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Dr. Bratton. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mark wanted his readers to draw strength and encouragement from the life and example of Jesus. What was true for Jesus was to be true for the apostles and disciples of all ages. The heart of the Gospel of Mark is Mark 8.31. I repeat, the heart of the Gospel of Mark is Mark 8.31. And Mark 8.31 says, And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. The heart of the Gospel of Mark is when Jesus began to teach his disciples the Son of Man, meaning Jesus, must suffer many things and he will be rejected by the elders, by the leaders of the community, the leaders of the synagogue, by the chief priests, by the religious community, by the scribes, and he would not only be rejected, but they will put him to death. And Jesus said, and after three days, he will rise again. So Mark 8.31 is the heart of the gospel. The four gospels deal with the same basic material, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They are called, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the, the synoptics. Synoptics, that means they have uh, different views, but view, they're viewing Jesus' life together. The synoptics, and John is uh, a, a little different. Uh, John gives more divine aspects of the Lord's life. So the synoptic gospels 
are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And each one wrote for a different audience. Matthew wrote for the Jewish audience. Mark wrote for the Roman audience. And Luke uh, wrote for the Gentile audience. And, and, and God knew that everybody would not accept Mark. Everybody would not accept Matthew. Everybody would not accept Luke. Everybody would not accept John's writings. But together we have four Gospels telling the story of Jesus Christ. And, and they are synop, synop, synoptic and they are right on target. Mark was a companion of Paul. We mentioned that earlier and a companion of Peter in addition to being Peter's nephew. Okay, let's take a look at um, the three segments, the organization of the book. Introduction, Mark chapter 1. Uh, service, Mark 1, 14 to 8.30. Sacrifice, Mark 8, 31 to 15. And let's add a fourth section, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Mark chapter 16. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mark has no genealogy, whereas Matthew and Luke uh, have genealogies, and each one has a different genealogy. Um, one traces Jesus all the way back to Adam. Another genealogy traces uh, Jesus all the way back um, to, to Abraham um, um, to show that Jesus was the Messiah. Mark has no genealogy. He jumps right into the life of Christ. He shows Jesus as the Son of God. And uh, Mark, Isaiah, John the Baptist, and God all testify uh, to Jesus Christ. These four voices, these four voices uh, testify to Jesus Christ. Mark calls Jesus the Son of God. Isaiah said, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Uh, John the Baptist says, there cometh one mightier. And God says, thou art my beloved Son. And Mark mentions all four of these in his gospel in the first chapter. Jesus began his ministry in Galilee by preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The word gospel, ladies and gentlemen, means good news. Now, now here again, here again, we've got we've to wake up and, and, and get away from the teaching of, of the religious community, the so-called church, uh, the, the religious community. Because if you go to the mall or to the store and you want to get a gospel album, Okay, the gospel albums may not be gospel, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're looking at little Willie, he bought a, bought an apple and gave the apple to his sister. His sister got sick, and then Aunt Susie uh, took him to the hospital. And then uh, at the hospital, uh, they called on the doctor, and the doctors couldn't help little Willie. And then a little old lady, she was sweeping the floor, and she said, "Let me pray for him." I mean, a lot of the songs, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, don't mention much about Jesus, okay? But they're called gospel. And then some songs, ladies and gentlemen, some records, some so records, they don't do records anymore, some CDs, whatever, they might mention Jesus, but you got to be careful. Ladies and gentlemen, what Jesus are they talking about? So the term, the use of the word gospel has been played with so much that it's so watered down. Uh, 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 I know... And when people ask you, well, what, what's your singing style? What's your singing genre? Oh, I'm a gospel singer. And, and you're a gospel singer, but you don't mention Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, so we, when we look at the word gospel, we're looking at good news. The gospel ought to have some good news for people. And, 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 and people need some good news. Well, what is the good news? The gospel is the good news that people do not any longer have to perish in their sinful condition. In fact, they don't even have to continue living in sin. But there is good news. Don't you know Jesus Christ died on the cross and they buried him in the grave and he raised himself again on the third day like he said he would and 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 if you get, receive him and give your life to him you'll be changed you'll be saved and your life will change that's good news ladies and gentlemen that's what the gospel is all about so Jesus began his ministry 
according to Mark 1, 14 to 15, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He's he, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is at hand. When Jesus went and took the scrolls and read from the scrolls in the synagogue, he read a certain passage. He read from Isaiah, where Isaiah talked about uh, a new thing coming and Jesus read from Isaiah and and said this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes this day uh, the kingdom of God is at hand Jesus began not only just to teach about the gospel but wherever he went he taught with authority ladies and gentlemen if you've been called to preach if you're the head of your household if you're if you're the a uh, 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 a boy scout leader or whatever you have authority when you sit around that campfire with the boy scouts you can open your bible and teach with authority ladies and gentlemen god wants this word taught with authority and you have authority to get somebody saved. You have authority to lead them to Christ. You have authority in your house. You don't have to watch sickness destroy your loved ones. You don't have to watch your grandchildren cut fits on the floor. No, 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 no. Ain't any, no little grandchild or no little child is going to come and disrupt my house by rolling on the floor and acting like a Ubangi. You have authority to cast that demon out. You have a, an authority to cast that demon out. Ladies and gentlemen, if your husband's cheating on you, coming home, smelling like some other woman's, smell like a, 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 a French hole, I mean, you don't have to stay and cry all night and sit up and cry waiting on him to come home. Ladies and gentlemen, you can get a case of the that's it. And if you get the case of the hallelujah, that's it. That's it. And you stand up to that man telling him, this is the last time you're coming in and smell like some French hole. And you put the word of God on him. And, and if he raises his hand, yeah, you raise your hand on me and you'll die. You touch me and you'll die. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to use your authority and, 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 and strike some terror in his heart. Ladies and gentlemen, strike some terror. Have that Negro, I'm sorry, have that man arrested. Put him behind Amen. bars. And when he, Amen. and look, 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 he beating on you, have him arrested. And don't go running to the court to get him released from jail right away. Let him sweat. Let him know what it's like to have men in prison wanting him, wanting to get next to him, wanting him to do the back, back up, back it up now. And you, you let him know, <laughs> let him know that he had a good woman at home and he should have taken care of her. And let him know, let, yeah, let him know, let him go through some of that persecution yes. in prison. And that would get a lot of them straight now. Ladies and gentlemen, what do they call, call home? Mama, Grandma. I'm in prison. Come and get me. Ladies and gentlemen, don't break your neck going to get them, getting them out of jail. Amen. If they wouldn't listen when you're trying to teach them something, don't break your neck trying to get them out of jail. Amen. Let them know what a, uh, let them know what a man's breath smells like when a man's trying to look over their shoulder, uh, a feeling on their behind. Let them know how uh, what an atrocity that is, what an abomination that. Let them know and and let them know that 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 they can't stand it to the place where they have to call on the name of Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. You have authority. Yes. Satan been at, and been causing a lot of our folks to act weak like punks. Ladies and gentlemen, I told my kids when I raised them, you have one mistake. You're entitled to one mistake with the law, and it better be a good one. If I feel that your case is something worth fighting for, I'll fight for you. But if you're arrogant and ignorant and you're going to go and do whatever you want to do, contrary to, to the way we taught you, then let the chips fall where they may. Amen. And ladies and gentlemen, my kids said, Dad, you're a hard man. That's what they said then. But each one has called me and said, Dad, I thank you for being a tough man that you stood on the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I ain't going to break my neck going borrowing a whole lot of money, uh, a canvas in the neighborhood for money to bail my uh, a relative out of jail of that relative selling drugs. If I got a relative selling drugs, mm -hmm. then he ought to get what's due to him or her. Ladies and gentlemen, because my relatives know better. If you're selling drugs, now I know that's hard. 
I know that's no. hard. I know, but no. it, look, 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 look. The Bible says, "Train up your children in the way in which they should go. When they're old, they're not depart from it." Ladies and gentlemen, if you got a relative; he's still selling drugs and trying to get over on people, breaking into homes. If if I got a relative breaking into homes, Amen. Uh, his behind ought to get somebody in that house ought to fire him up with a three five seven or a Glock. And that'll put an end to it. Lady, they, you may think I'm hard. Oh, you're vindictive. You're condemning. No, I am not because my children have been trained. And that's up to them to train. And if more of our people would train our families and stop being yeah. afraid of these kids, uh, yeah. we, we'd be, we'd be a, we, as a race of people, we'd be a better witness for Jesus Christ. But yeah. because, because we've gotten soft, we don't know our word, oh, we can go to church, we can get our church on, we can get our praise on, but we can't get our houses right because we're scared of our, those children or those grandchildren. Not here. Well, hallelujah. Anybody want to comment on that so I can calm down a little bit before going on and bringing this thing to a close? You know, Pastor I'm taking Carl notes. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah. I'm taking notes. <laughs> the Bible says, train a child in the way they should go. Now, we we as Christians look at it as training them in righteousness. However, training has the flip side, too. Some people train their children in unrighteousness. Yes. And the Bible is so true. It says, and when they are older, they will not depart from it. So if you're training your child in unrighteousness, guess what? They don't depart from it, not without a divine intervention from Jesus. This is why we have all these hard-headed children that don't think anything about shooting somebody with a gun. A lot of them have been trained in unrighteousness. Yes, the yes. eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth kind of mentality. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bratton. Thank you, Dr. Bratton. Now, now you have trained your children how to, when you go to a gas station to get gas for your car, you train, train your child how to slide out of the back seat and slip into somebody's car and steal somebody's pocketbook. Well, when that child winds up in jail, when that child gets a 30-year sentence, you put that on yourself. Amen? That's how they trained them. Amen. Well, the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go. And 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 praise God. Amen. Don't be afraid to train. And if you're raising your grandchildren, uh, hey, if you open my refrigerator, that means when it comes time to go to church, you go in the church. If, <laughs> if, if, if you sleep in my bed, that means when it's time to have family uh, uh, prayer service or family Bible study, you're going to be there. I don't care if you got a headache. I don't care if your face is turning green, you're going to come to the service. Amen? Yes. Yes. Amen. We need and and no is not a bad word. No is not a bad word. No, it's not. No, it's That's not. Right. No, it's not. It's okay to tell them no. They're, they're not on the planet just to suck up the air. And ladies and gentlemen, right. ladies and gentlemen, I, I commend these grandmothers who have turned their grandsons in for tell, selling drugs. Glory to yeah. God. I, 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 I commend those parents who have called the cops to come and arrest my, my son because he's doing dope. He's selling dope. Because when they get to the point where they don't want to listen to you, get them arrested. Get them arrested. Perhaps that prison spell will be enough time to call them to their senses. Otherwise, it's the cemetery. Yes. Yeah. And the wage yeah. is the Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, what you were saying, but I had a comment that I wanted to make. I just wanted to finish hearing your thought before I make it. What? No, go ahead and make your comment. Okay, my comment was that I, I'm in a position now where having been a daughter raised in my parents' home, now I'm in a position where I have to speak up for them and myself. Yes. And I like what you said about the Christian boldness and, and taking authority over the enemy. As well as taking authority in the home, yes, and taking authority for healing, and taking authority for whatever the need is in the household. Now, the things that my mother used to have to speak up for, I have to speak up for them now. Yes, yes, yes. And sometimes I don't always feel so courageous to do it, 
but I know it has to be done. And I know my father is not always in a position to do it because he may feel threatened more than I do. Yes, yes. But I, I'm really being bold in the power of the Holy Spirit to say what I need to say and to do the best I can to speak up for my family because I love my family. Praise God. And, 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 and do that. And, and, and I've, been following, uh, I've been following your Facebook today. I know the situation. And here's what I want to share, and not to give everybody your, all your business. Don't, con, don't con, contend with those devils out there. Okay? All right. And that includes, that includes some of them deacons in your church. They were, devils, right. they were devils before you were born. Mm. They, they set your daddy up. They bled him until he became an old man. They set your mama up. Now they want to kick your mama and daddy to the curb. Denounce those devils. Turn them over to Jesus. And don't give them the time of day. Don't argue with them on Facebook. And, all right. And that one who called your father and got him all upset today because you put some things on Facebook. Say I'm all in your business, Judy. Don't even that's give all right. The time I, that's why I put it on Facebook. By, I put it on Facebook because I wanted the sheets to be pulled off the yeah. whole situation. Bind those that's demons. Hidden. Bind those demons in the name of Jesus. Cover your family with the blood of Jesus, and you keep on going on. And don't spend time arguing with those devil devils. Got to take care of that. Got to take care of that deacon board, and that Amen. trustee all board. Right. Okay, uh, there's room. Up all right, and uh, Judy, going up uh, 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 Angle Street, up on that road. You know where that little where well, all those tombstones are. Yes, I do. There's room for a few more deacons in that place. <laughs> 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 Tight, but it's right, huh, Gene Brett? Tight, but it's right. But, but, but love them. Loving means you stand up for your family. You don't take all that crap. Right. Right. But then, but then you use the authority. Jesus has given you the keys to the kingdom. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth is bound in heaven. Shut those devils down and don't give them a voice. Jesus wouldn't let demons talk. That's right. Jesus did not dialogue with them when he in Mark chapter five when he went to Gadara, yeah. and we're back to Mark, uh, and and that demon had that man running through the graveyard, yeah. scaring people and chains chains couldn't hold him, and Jesus came in, and those demons had enough sense to know who Jesus was, and those deacons in your church have they know who Jesus is, they have not they just uh, have gotten beside themselves, Judy. Exactly, but Jesus, and Jesus kept the thing demons out, shut them down, and he he forbade them to talk. You know, you can't talk. You're you're a demon. You're you don't you don't have a voice. Get out of him. Yes, right. Yes, Pastor Amen. Carter. I just want to say I just want to say this that in taking spiritual authority, um, things are different in 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 a congregation where you have people who acknowledge God's authority and spirituality and a congregation where you have a faction of people who completely ignore spiritual authority and try to override uh, spiritual authority and, and God's place in the church and so much carnality it's hard to deal with that situation, but I know what I have to do yes. as far as taking spiritual authority and rebuking the devil. Yes, yes. And, and pleading the blood of Jesus. I know I know what to do. And remember what, what God told Jehoshaphat. The battle is not yours. It's, it's mine. It's the Lord. You just going out there with the praise warriors and you give God some praise and, and watch how God has shut them down. And don't forget Judy with a spoon. I first came to Chester to, Pro to pastor Providence Baptist Church. They were, yeah. no, they were notorious for disrespecting spiritual authority. Oh, boy. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we didn't get too much on Mark today, but, but uh, uh, you read the Gospel of Mark, but, um, and, and, and this is just leading us into, uh, as we go into next year's, um, uh, study. We're going to spend more time on certain subjects in these books, 
and teach about uh -huh. our spiritual authority. We're going to teach about uh, the authority God has given us. Uh, uh, teach about how to love your neighbor when your neighbor uh, wants to jack you up. Um, we're, we're going to talk about a lot of these things. So that that's just a little foretaste tonight, and we're going to do it scripturally and in love and we're going to learn who we are in him, and we're going to worship him, and we're going to see even greater things happen. Well, uh, to conclude, Mark, Mark talks about the sacrifice of Jesus. Uh, Mark 8.31, when Jesus told his disciples uh, what his purpose was, that he was going to die, and he would rise again from the dead, uh, they didn't understand what he was saying, but they saw it happen. And then um, uh, he was crucified, and um, Mark, Mark is so influential in teaching about the resurrection of Jesus. One of the most important doctrines of the Christian faith is the belief in the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. I commend my precious wife, Jackie. The other day she was out cleaning the driveway, and some Jehovah's Witnesses came and gave her some literature. And Jackie said, whoa, whoa, time out, time out, hold it, time out. She ran into the house, got us some tracks, Jean Bratton, got us some, <laughs> some, some religious literature. And, and she said, she went back out. She said, now, where were we? And they were talking about, well, you know, this is a very important week. It's all about the death of Jesus. And, and, and Jackie said, oh, no, 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 no. Here, take my literature. This is all about yeah, the right. res. She said, "This is all about the resurrection of Jesus." That's right. Man, the girl that's chased. Right. She chased the Jehovah's Witnesses away. She said, "I'm with you, Jackie." It's about the resurrection right. of Jesus. Praise Amen. God. Well, Amen. God. ladies and gentlemen, just continue reading your Bible and 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 do not think that your labor is in vain. God honors you, and and as you read the Bible, I want to, to encourage you. Get on the page. Get there on the page with Jesus. And Lord Jesus, reveal to me what this means. How shall I apply this to my life? Get on the page. And do not be afraid, ladies and gentlemen, because time is winding up. These are the end times. But there's a treasure in us, this Bible, this Word of God, the Holy Ghost in us. We're saved. We're not of this world. We're a different race of people. I'm not talking about black or white or Hispanic. God is raising up a race of people called Christians who died to self and have been born again by the Spirit of God. And he said, go ye into all the world preaching this gospel. And so uh, your world might be uh, uh, Walmarts on Saturday afternoon. Your world might be the place a Hardee's where you go for breakfast. Your world might be the ice cream store, but go there and give people some word with love. And if they hate you, don't worry about it. You turn them over to Jesus. Uh, the Lord said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Don't let them intimidate you, Judy. Don't let them intimidate you, Jean. Don't be intimidated, but you, uh, 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 you stand on the word of God and you let the Lord fight every battle and give him the praise and worship him and honor him. Study your scripture, love one another, and we hope to see you again next uh, Wednesday night when Jackie will be teaching on the gospel of Luke. Read Luke uh, ahead of time and um, um, let us fellowship one with another. By the way, if you can't get out to church on Sunday morning, uh, come and join us on the same hookup for the Worship Where I Am Church, where God is changing lives. But if you're in the Wilmington, Delaware area and you want to go to church, you need to call Dr. Gene Bratton and say, how do I get there? Uh, 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 call Judy Witherspoon and Chester, how do I get there? And uh, 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 if you're in Massachusetts, I want you to get in touch with uh, 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 Lynn and, and Carolyn uh, Gray and say, how do we get there? You all keep on loving one, one another. Oh, by the way, if you're in North Carolina, call James Carey. He'll get you there. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great night, everybody. Lord love you. God bless you. Good night.